cooking gadgets in this video work, we're in for a treat and life in the kitchen is gonna be easier because honestly, I found some amazing kitchen gadgets including this knife. Uh, this is a butter knife that separates the butter into little thin strips so that it can warm up quicker. You know when you go to spread butter and you take a bit off and it's just solid and you put it on your bread and it just wrecks your bread? No more. I'm going to taste my slice of... I'm going to toast my slice of bread. Oh, you can see me! Hello! So this is what the knife looks like. And as you can see, it's got a ton of little holes that the butter should go through. It also does have a serrated edge, but I'm gonna try using this and see what happens. Funnily enough, this did not come with uh, instructions. So I'm just gonna do what I think I should be doing. <gasps> okay, it is going through, but on the other side, I have a buildup of butter that I'm not too sure what to do with. Shall I just try and put it back on the butter slab? It's coming through very unevenly. No, it's overdone. To some of you, that may be the perfect slice of toast. That to me is, but no, that's that's definitely burnt. If you like your toast that color, I think there's something wrong with you. And then my brain is taking a moment here because I don't spread butter this way. I do it this way, but am I meant to now turn the knife upside down? Let's just try. Do you know what? I've spread better slices of toast in my life. I'm, I just don't really know what I'm doing here. Given that that butter was literally straight from the fridge, couldn't be more hard. That's the hardest kind of butter. That spread pretty easily. It's pretty good, but I do feel like I didn't have the knack of using the knife. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. I think that's pretty decent. I just need to learn how to use it properly. I saw a video of this next one working and honestly, it looks like a mini robot. Ooh, it is so much bigger than I thought it was gonna be. This is a jar opener. I have a jar so we can test this out. This is a pickle jar that Nick turned into a coffee jar that now is no longer in use. So I have a jar. The jar sits in here. These two close on the lid. These two close onto the jar and then it twists the lid off. I know that there are life hacks where you can like jimmy a knife under it or like smash it on the table, but I would rather calmly pop this on and just have it opened. So I'm gonna get some batteries and we shall test this out. I'm very excited. We have some batteries. Ow, ow. Ooh, let me put the butter away quickly. I don't know if I'm the only person that does this, but when I'm watching people on YouTube, I always wonder what their house smells like and what they smell like. And I can let you know that currently this room smells of burnt toast. It's not great. Do we read the instructions or do we just click the button on top? Shall I just try it? I just wanna click the button. I'm just, I'm just gonna go for it. We'll just see what happens. Oh gosh. Oh, wait, do I need to hold the button or no? I think I've got to hold it down. I don't like the sound of this. I don't know about that. <laughs> that was a little bit scary, but the lid is off. I'm gonna try and find a jar that I can't open the lid of, which I feel like I can open all of the jars at the moment. I'm just so strong. I have another jar now. I can get the lid off of this jar. However, this one's easier to tighten than this one just because of the size of the lid. So I'm gonna tighten it as tight as I can. Are we ready? Because I am not. That made me jump last time. It was a little bit scary. Picture the scenario. I'm at home, alone. I'd really like some seeds, but I cannot open the jar. One moment, trusty device. Takes a little bit of time. I can't even watch it. Oh, it keeps on turning. Yes, it's very, very noisy. But you know how I was all, oh, I'm not gonna read the instructions well. It says on here, press the button for three seconds and release. So I think I've done it wrong. Press and hold the start button. The outer jaws move. Release the button when the outer jaws pause. So. If I let go, it stops working. I don't understand. Not following the instructions worked. I got the lid off. Following the instructions, I'm confused. It's very, very noisy, can startle. So maybe don't, you know, give it to an elderly person without letting them know first. It may startle you. I'm gonna give it a thumbs up. I'm gonna give it four and a half stars out of five. For this next kitchen gadget, I'm going to strip some herbs. I have this little tool from Amazon. It looks a little like a gua sha device, but it does, I think, have a blade on one end. So do not 
use as a gua sha. Oh, it looks so fancy. It looks like a lovely little tool to have in your arsenal. I think that's the right word. So this is what it looks like. And I think under here is a blade. So be careful with that. There's lots of different sizes of holes and you're just meant to pull the herbs through the hole and all the leaves should come off. I feel like that's an appropriate size for mint. So are we ready? I don't know. It has stripped the mint leaves. I just thought it would be nicer about it. What if I take the tip of the mint off like this and I put it through this way? I feel like this might work better. Or not. See, that's how I thought it was gonna do that. That's nice and clean and the leaves are fully intact and not like broken at all. I think I'm being too pedantic. Stem is through and I think I'm doing something wrong. I just don't know what it is. Gosh. Oh, <gasps> rosemary works. Oh, kind of. Okay, that's a lot better though. It is a lot, lot better. Oh no. Oh, okay. No, it's not because they're all still stuck together. These bits are good. <laughs> oh, it's gone everywhere. I want to review this and say, I'm not very good at using this, but it shouldn't be hard to use is the thing. I don't feel like stripping leaves is that difficult. I just don't think this one is for me. I will continue to strip leaves by hand. This, everybody, is my new toaster friend and he's called Bernie. How adorable that they've actually given him a name. Bernie will help you grab your toasted bread so burnt fingers you will not dread. See how good Bernie is. Shh. I love him. He's so cute. This is Bernie. How cute, Bernie. So Bernie is a pair of tongs made from wood because you shouldn't be putting metal into a toaster. They work like this, but I feel like this wood is just gonna snap off. However, they're working. So that's genius. Ooh, and look, it stands up. Oh, this is so cute. Can you even see him? Can you see Bernie? Oh, Bernie, you look so cute just there. The toast has actually gone quite low down. However, this toaster, genius. While it's cooking, you can actually lift it up and have a look at your toast. And while lifted, I can reach my piece of toast, which means I don't have much use for Bernie. However, we shall test him. I mean, it does what it says on the packet, ladies and gentlemen. That is wonderful. I made a little mistake. I forgot that I required a full courgette for this video. So last night when I looked in the fridge for veggies to eat, we had courgette, but I bought it in order to test this spiralizer. So this is all I've got left and we're gonna hope that we can get some good spiralized courgette from just this chunk of courgette. So this is what it looks like. It looks like a little flower and the food goes into it and twists. Which way do you twist? It doesn't actually say which way to twist. Okay. Oh, I don't know about this. Yeah, no, it's coming out. It's coming out okay. I mean, these strips are pretty long and intact. Wow, these may be the longest strips I've ever gotten. Oh my goodness, look at those strips. The only thing is I can't twist this anymore. This is actually really hard to get my fingers into, which I guess is good because now my fingers aren't going near the blade. But maybe if I use a fork and twist with the fork. Oh, I can get a little bit more out of it. <gasps> oh no, okay, fork is going, oh. <gasps> Why does that look good to me? It feels kind of like the nib of a pen. I'm gonna give it a thumbs up, but I feel like it loses a slight point for at the end, you can't really use all of your produce. Not dishwasher safe. Okay, so you do have to clean it by hand, which does mean getting the scour in there with the blades, which I don't know how I feel about that. Still give it a thumbs up and a four out of five. I'm gonna give this a two out of 10. I've just tried washing it. That's incredibly difficult to wash. Like my scour can't fully get in there. And when it does, it gets all stuck on the blades and there's food in there that I can't get out and I can't reach because the scour is just breaking. This is truly one of the sweetest looking kitchen gadgets. I'm, well, I hope it is. It looked cute online. <gasps> it's so cute. <laughs> Look at this. This is a little, what looks like an egg cup, but it's actually so that you can put eggs in it and tip out the egg white and save the yolk. <gasps> oh, Nick got white eggs. I didn't even know. Oh, 
Look at these! I remember years ago I tried to do an Easter egg DIY video and it required white eggs and I couldn't find any. I personally don't struggle separating egg yolk and egg white, however, if this works it's easier and less messy. I do the little juggle thing with the egg and I do get egg on my hands. So this could be cleaner. We're gonna crack an egg into it. Eggbutt. We'll call him Eggbutt. Right, and then we're just supposed to... Wait. That's actually doing a really good job. Oh no, it's stuck. It looks a little bit gross actually. Oh, oh! I feel like the yolk could go through. It's going. Whoop. Do I think it's easier? I don't know. I want to show you this from the top this time. Here's Eggbutt, and I'm just gonna tip everything out. Ooh, that actually looks really quite gross. Oh, there it goes. I'm gonna have to go around the table. Can you see that there's still egg white left in there? It's very difficult to get that last bit of egg white. There is a slight level of skill required to do this, but this egg yolk doesn't seem to slip through. I will say my method is a little bit faster, but I don't know whether that's just because I've mastered it and I am a master. Who knows? I'm gonna give it five stars and a thumbs up because I mean, it works and it's adorable. I saved this one till the end. It's the one I'm most excited about and I'm gonna have on the screen some videos of cube croissants that I've seen across social media. I see them all the time. They have bakeries in London that do them. I've wanted to go there for the longest time. They look incredible. And then I decided, what if I just make my own? But I am no baker. So I just bought a Just Roll pre-made croissant situation. And we're gonna pop it inside this little box that I bought. It's a cube toast pan, that's what it's called. And we're gonna pop it in the oven and see how it goes. I'm so excited for this one. It's falling apart. This is my tin. And this just slides in. I'm basically going to make this up as I go along because I cannot find an official recipe for making these. For the first one, I'm going to use two. Oh, that's definitely, definitely too small. Look at the size of that. <laughs> How many do you think I need? Shall I do three of them? I'm going to do four, you know. I'm just experimenting so that you don't have to. And we're just going to hope for the best. This is what it looks like. I've sort of stacked two this way and two this way. So there's a little bit of a Jenga situation going on. I'm not a baker. I know nothing. Suitable for 250 grams of dough. Why didn't I measure it? What's 340 divided by six times by four? 226 points. I think my guesstimate of four croissants was decent. I'm impressed with myself. In the meantime, I'm going to chop this into some cubes. It's been 11 minutes and I'm trying my hardest not to go and look in there. In the meantime, I have made this little cube. I've basically just stacked on top lots of layers and then chopped off the edges. I think this is about the right shape. 13 minutes, I really, really want to look in there. <laughs> it has risen, not to the top of the pan, which makes me think I want to add another layer to this, but it's risen. It's time to get them out. I got so nervous about this. <gasps> oh, it doesn't look as good as the ones that I've seen. Oh, I don't think it's cooked in the middle at all. <gasps> oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely not cooked in the middle. Let's put my chunk of dough in. I literally couldn't have cut that to a more perfect shape. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna put this in the oven and I'm gonna turn the oven down to 180. This was 25 minutes at 180. No, no, definitely soft in the middle. Quick, get it back in. Get it back in. Get back in the oven, quick. I just got very, very, very sidetracked because I saw the most beautiful sunset. I think this has been on for an extra like 10 minutes now. It's potentially burnt. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. This is my cube croissant. It's not terrible. Um, I like all of the little layers in it. This ended up being a croissant recipe cube video. What I was actually reviewing was this thing um, and it's pretty good. Definitely non-stick, cooks well. I like that the lid slips on and off, nice and easy, it catches itself. I can't complain. I completely forgot to film me kind of cracking into this like people do. When I've seen videos of these, they do show making a hole in the bottom, like filling it with cream. So mine won't have cream in it, but we're gonna open it up and see what it looks like inside. <gasps> it is actually pretty cooked. Oh my gosh, okay, I'm actually really quite impressed. I did a great job, I'm so proud of myself. I will keep trying. In the meantime, I hope you'd enjoy, and I'll see you soon, bye.